John chapter 15 verse 16. The scripture says, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit. Fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Let's make a prayer, please. Father, we commit the word into the holy hands. Pray that your people will be able to understand. Not only to understand, their hearts will be quickened to really run and take this word and live according to it. For the glory and honor of your name. Holy Spirit, torment every heart that is listening until they make course correction, till they take this and run with it. Take over. We enthrone you in Jesus' name. Amen. You did not choose me, but I chose you. Then there is a conjunction, which basically is an addition, and I appointed you. The King James Version says, I ordained you. And I ordained you to go and bear fruit. He did not just stop there and say, fruit that will last. See, if it was a one week. Not things of two days and then tomorrow you wait again. That is not the salvation that Christ has given to us. I did not ordain you to go and be mediocre. That's what he said. I appointed you to bear fruit. That is what he said. I did not call you and justify you then glorify you for nothing. I called you out of all this stupidity, I called you out of all this, to go and bear fruit. Any Christian who's been called and appointed does not bear fruit. It's basically just doing the opposite. And then on top of it, it says, fruit that will last. Not fluctuating things. Fluctuating things are about mediocrity. Someone, Ajayelewa, what is doing? Anything you do today, tomorrow you don't do it the same way you did it yesterday, it shows that there is a problem with your heart. Four things stand out of this. Number one, you did not choose me, but I chose you. Number two, I appointed you to go and bear fruit. Number three, fruit that will last. And the last one is the one we'll conclude with, which is basically... Then the father, then, what is the word then? Huh? Consequently, subsequently, this is what will follow. It means when you do fast this, you bear fruit, fruit that lasts, then the father will do something. That's what he's saying. Number one, the Lord says, you did not choose but I chose you. You know what it means? Jesus spoke this word to the eleven. Who are the eleven? The disciples. And he added to you. Equally true is this of all Christians. Why did Jesus say you didn't choose me? It is not accurately true. What do you think? Observe very well. They had chosen to follow Jesus. He did not drag them into his service. Kicking and screaming. They are not looking for ways to escape from his ministry. In John chapter 1 verse 37, Andrew followed Jesus without being asked. He goes to get Peter and brings him to Jesus. True or false? Was he asked to do that? Okay. So the point is not even that Jesus made the first contact. Now, turn it round. The statement. Here is the mystery in that statement. 
What if Jesus had said, I did not choose you, you chose me? It will mean I am not bound to you. You wanted to come along. If the going gets rough, don't come crying to me. It is your choice. When he said, I chose you, you did not choose me. Brethren, it is not a joke. We've been joking a lot with this Christianity. But Jesus said the opposite. You did not choose me. I chose you. Your presence here is my doing. So I take full what? That's what it means. What is saying, you did not choose me. Because if you chose me, the going got tough. You will say, I chose you. I decide. I'm leaving. But he chose us. When he chose us, it means he's saying, it is my responsibility. Your coming into the kingdom of God is my doing. So, it is my responsibility. That's what he said. The understanding is this. I know you agreed to join me in this work. But it was I who laid choice on you. So my honor, not yours. It is a stake in this work. I chose you. I called you. I justified you. I glorified you. When I made this choice, I know you agreed to join me in this work. So when you agreed, to join me in this work. It was I who laid the choice on you. What you have. You owe to this sovereign God. And you are bound to devote all to his service. Jesus will not lightly look on our cry for help. When we say, Lord, you chose me. It means this. In your prayers when you tell him that. You are not indecisive. The Lord is never indecisive. He knew why he called you. It is you who is indecisive. It is you who is slow. Because you are indecisive. But the Lord is not that. So when we cry for help. And we tell him Lord you chose me. The Lord is never indecisive. He will come. Because he chose you. When you tell him, Lord, when you called me, you chose me, you are not short-sighted. You think the Lord makes a mistake? The Lord does not put people like the way men put people. The Lord is not an imprudent person. Which means precipitate. Precipitate, all like that. The Lord does not make decisions araka. The Lord is not like human beings. When someone runs and makes a decision as quick as possible, then tomorrow he's regretting. God is not like that. He said, I chose you. You did not choose me. That's what it means. You are not a mistake to be a born again Christian. The Lord knew you and he called you. Your choices have the weight of eternity because he knew you last. It is you who's short-sighted who don't understand why God called you. That's why some of you are still very slow. Me, I can't do that. I don't believe in this. You will not let your chosen one be ruined. Such a plea. If it comes from the heart, Jesus cannot ignore it. If it comes from the heart, it is sincere. The Lord cannot ignore it. Because the Lord protect his word wherever it goes. No lies can be found in the Lord. People that have walked by faith and they have done extraordinary things that human beings have not, known, have not done, they understood God in this understanding. His wisdom and constancy and reliability are at stake when you don't do this. Matthew 16, 18. And I tell you that you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church. And the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Why did he say that statement? 
when you look at the entire story, when he asked them, who do people say that I am? The question is about who do people say that I am? In another word, he's asking them a clear question. What are people saying? What kind of a brand I am? Then he turns to his disciples. The one he chose. What are you saying? What about you? What I say that I am? Peter says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. He said, Peter, that was not revealed by you. My father revealed that. Then he says, you are Peter. Upon such, which such? Proclamations. Understanding, I will build my church. And the gate of hell cannot prevail. When you walk in that understanding, no gate of hell will prevail. Because of mediocrity, we put everything at stake. He's saying, you don't build my church. I build it. I chose you. I called you. My rules, my ways, my thinking, my doing. Do as I told you. Simple as that. To keep the standard of my company. That's what he said. I chose you. You're working for me. I have my rules. I have my ways. You do them as I say. I have a question of reflection here. In what sense did Jesus choose you differently from your choice of him? Look at this. His choices are different than yours. At least in two different senses. Number one, in the call to salvation. There's a mystery in what we are saying here. Look at this. He said, all things, according to Matthew 11:27. He said, all things have been delivered to me by my father. And no one knows the son except the father. And no one knows the father except the son. And anyone to whom the son chooses to reveal him. Matthew 11, 27. All things have been committed to me by my father. Mm -hmm. No one knows the son except the father. Mm -hmm. And no one knows the Father except the Son. Mm -hmm. And those whom, those to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. We were dead in trespasses. We were dead in sins. True or false? Vitu We were outside there. Completely finished. We didn't know even the way out at all. We were just living. Just living. Blinded by the God of this world. We were hopelessly hell bent until he called us by name and raised us from the dead. That is how that choice is different than ours in salvation. Number two, Christ chose you differently than you choose him is in the call to what? To ministry. If you chose him, you will never serve him. But when you understand he chose you. The work get tough. In a quamzito, in a quamzito, you feel all you need to do and say, Lord, you called me. In your call, you are not indecisive. Lord, you called me. In your call, you are not short-sighted. Lord, you called me. In your call, you knew me. With all my limitations. When you do that, it takes over. That's why he said, I called you. I chose you. You did not choose me. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Therefore, be encouraged. Be very bold in your work. For Christ is for you. And his very honor is at stake in your success. He knows it. When you understand that the Lord chose you, did not choose him, you cannot defend this church. He defends it. All you need to do, play by his rules. Wakisema, we are sucking you. You suck me. That's okay. But you, when you are being told by the corporate, we are sucking you. <laughs> you forget that it is the Lord who called you, chose you, put you there. I believe when I preach and I teach, I don't see outside there. I see you able to change that. The Lord is, at the, is the Lord of remnant. A little group of people taken among the many. So he can do that with you. If a Christian can be bought with money, then he never followed Christ. Because Jesus didn't die for money. He didn't die to give you money. 
Number two, he appointed you to go and do what? Number one, he chose you. You do not. And number two, he says, I appointed you to go and bear fruit. In other words, he's saying, I have chosen you. You passed my interview. I chose you. You came in. You said yes. You had a choice. But I chose you. You are my best choice. I brought you in. So when I brought you in, when I gave you the office and I told you sit down, I told you one thing to do with my company. To do what? To go and bear fruit. People sleep, they wake up in the morning, they don't remember that when they are going to the street. When they are going to their work. When they are going. In everything we do, remember this is what the Lord called you to do. I appointed you to go and bear fruit. Ambassadors. Send in the world. To bear fruit. The only fruit that will ever endure to eternal life is fruit which grows out of the cross. The fruit that endures are not just fruit that come anyhow. Any other fruit that is growing outside the cross, the cross does not endure. In John chapter 12, verse 23, 24, Jesus says this. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be done what? Glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears what? We are not giving fruits that deserves the brand of Jesus because we ourselves, we don't die at the cross. Until you deny yourself, you died on the cross. You remember that Matthew, 20, Matthew chapter 16? Where Jesus says, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. He said, everyone must take up his cross. Daily, deny himself, then follow me. When you do that, you but any person who resists the cross of Jesus, the dying cannot bear much fruit. My honor is at stake. When you walk in, do the work of this company according to my rules. When you are beaten, don't compromise. Come back to me and cry. I will help you. It is me who built the company. That's what he's saying. The understanding is this. We are Christ's fruits because he died. He became that seed that died so that it may bear much fruit. So when he died, we became the fruit that he brought in. True false. That's why he says, I chose you. I laid myself down on the cross and bought you with my blood. That's what he said. You are now my fruit. And my fruit what? Bear. That's what I say. Go bear fruit. We are his fruit bearers. If we are willing to take up our cross and die with him. It is the same principle in marriage. When you don't deny yourself for the other person, you lose. Everything you do in the world is about you, not. But when we get to know God... In a marriage, it's no longer about me. It's about the other one. That is the same, same calling we have received in Christ. Until I die, I can't serve people. This embraces two things. Number one, the conversion of what? Of sinners. Fruit also includes the making of new what? Disciples. Read John chapter 4, verse 35 and 36. Do you not say four months more and then the harvest? I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Even now the reaper draws his wages. Even now he harvests the crop for eternal life. So that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Are you seeing that? So we harvest fruits. Are you understanding? Fruit for eternal life. 
in John chapter 4 verse 36 correspond to the fruit that abides in John chapter 16. This is great for which Christians are chosen. That is the great hand of all. Tell your neighbor, that is why you are chosen. This embraces two things. It is not to be what? Idle or what? Useless. Or simply to seek enjoyment. He says, to go and bear what? Not to bear enjoyment. Matthew chapter 6 verse 32. It says that if that is how God clothes the grass of the field, mm. which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, mm -hmm. O you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things. Pagans run after this thing. I chose you. You did not choose me. You are mine. My honor is at stake. Pagan runs after this because they don't bother about my honor. But you, I chose you. And I know that you need them. Let me give it to you in the right way, at the right time, in a certain way. Because my honor is at stake in your success. That's what he's saying. He's not saying that you should not succeed. But he's saying my honor is at stake in your success. Be very careful. Let me help you. Pagan runs after it because they will break any rules to get it. But not you. Mm -hmm. He says, for the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. You need them. It is to do good and to spread as far as possible the rich and spiritual blessings which the gospel is fitted to caution on your mankind. We reduce Christianity to nothing. Things that do not even exist. This is what we call the appointment. Amen? He said, I appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should do what? Abide. It means ordained. It means set apart to be instrumental in God's hand for the bringing of nation into the obedience to Christ. Amen? Romans chapter 1, verse 13. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that I planned many times to come to you but have been prevented from doing so until now in order that I may have a harvest among you just as I have had among the Gentiles other you Gentiles see? it is all about that set apart, Paul was set apart instrumental in God's hand for the bringing of the nation into obedience to Christ this is why we've been called and chosen tell your neighbor, this is why we've been called and chosen we were not called and chosen to do nothing even every work you do is not for enjoyment. When you're in the the Lord has put you there in the corporate, still influence people to the kingdom of God. You're a CEO in a company. You know what you have to do. Some people push them. They push for a, for a, for a, for a, a CEO, a, a Christian union or whatever, a Christian prayer. When, whatever you are, you are there to win men to God. Strategies God will give them to you. All you need, you can be a good person to people. Until they want to know what makes you that good. What is this good? The good could just be the characters in you. Everybody knows that women are emotional people. But there is this woman who is never emotional. No matter emotions, she knows how to respect. No matter emotion, she knows what to say. No matter emotion, say, Holy Spirit, help me. Then other people want to know, what is this that you have that we do not have? The second is love for people. In order to bear fruit, verse 10 says, if you keep my commandment, you will abide in my love. That's what we've just said. Verse 2 of John chapter 15 says, if you don't bear fruit, you don't abide in the vine. You are snapped off and thrown where? Into the fire. Verse 6 also approves that. Number 3, finally, your fruit should be your fruit should do what? This probably means the effect of their labors will be permanent on what? Humankind. They should not be like those of false teachers. 
the result of whose labor soon vanish away. Those are the false prophets. But the fruit that lasts. Amen? That's what. But their gospel was to spread. To spread and take deep and permanent hold on people. That's what God has called us to do. When we grow, that's what we will do. Be diligent and tiring into their effort to spread the gospel. Until what? Death. It's not a one-time thing. The Christian, and especially the Christian minister, is devoted to the Savior for, for, for life. That is who we are. He chose us. We do not choose ourselves. He chose us. He called us. He justified us. He glorified us. He says, I will take care of my company. I will build my church and the ghetto of shall not prevail. All you need to do is follow my rules. I know as you're serving to become successful in what I've called you to do, my name is at stake. I will take care of it. Just follow my rules. That's what he's saying. The Savior never called a disciple to serve him merely for a no, to feel himself at what? To relax is what? In us. Not to be a Christian when religion produced. That's not what God called us. Yeah.